March is upon us, meaning we survived another winter. March is a transitional month. Historically, it's been cooler towards early March and it gets warmer towards the end of March. Not summer warm, but bearably cool warm. <laughs> March is also at the cusp of allergy season. My allergist told me March 1, I better be taking nose sprays and allergy meds to prepare for the allergy season in April. So if you suffer allergies, start taking those meds. But we all know you're not here to talk about the weather or allergies. So let's get to it. Let's talk about the eight things to do in New York City in the month of March. It's an understatement to say that New York City is a melting pot of culture. It's estimated that the world speaks something between six to 7,000 languages. And 10% of that is represented in New York. So there is about 600 plus languages spoken in New York City. And with language comes culture. And there are a lot of cultural events happening every day, every weekend in New York. And to give you an idea, here are three examples of cultural events that you can expect in March. And link to all these events are in the description below. The first one is from the Japan Society on March 18th at 7.30 p.m. They're hosting a play called The Good Story Murders. It's a sci-fi suspense play where people start to die middle age. The Japan Society is in Midtown Manhattan. It's a bit of a walk, but you can get there by walking from these train lines. While you're in the area, you can take some time to admire the UN building or take a 15 minute walk to Grand Central and one Vanderbilt. The second event is by Spain Arts and Culture, happening all this month from Thursdays to Sundays. A Collection Without Borders is an art exhibit that celebrates the arts and cultures of Spain, Portugal, Latin America, Goa, and the Philippines. This will be at the Hispanic Society Museum and Library in Upper Manhattan. You can get there by taking these trains. And lastly, the third event is from the French Institute Alliance Francaise happening on March 13th and 14th at 7.30 p.m. They're hosting the U.S. premiere of the film La Douleur. Just forgive my French. <laughs> I try, but that's the best you're gonna get from me. The setting is at the end of World War II and a woman's husband remains missing. The French Institute Alliance Francaise is in the Upper East Side. You can get there by taking these trains. The French Institute is actually a language school in Manhattan. They offer lessons for kids, teens, and adults. And it's great that they host movie nights because watching film is a great way to absorb language and culture. Of course, the best way to learn a language is total language immersion, but not all of us can go to Germany or France or Spain. But runner up to that, a great way to absorb language and culture is by watching film. Which brings us to today's sponsor, Lingopi. Lingopi is considered the Netflix of language learning. You can enjoy shows, movies, and music videos and turn them into a language learning experience. So this is what I really love about Lingopi. Not only do you get subtitles both on screen and the entire transcript of the show to decide here, but you can also click on words you don't understand. On top of this, you can save words to your vocabulary bank that you can study later. And when you study a word later, you get the media clip you saved it from. Lingopi has over 3,000 shows in nine different languages. And if that's not enough, you can also install Lingopi as a browser extension to get the same language learning tools on Netflix shows. Lingopi offers a seven day free trial, plus right now they have 70% off their lifetime membership. Check out the link in the description to get your seven day free trial and let me know what you think because honestly, I think this is a great language learning tool. Thank you Lingopi for sponsoring today's video. Something that I'm really excited for, and I'll explain why everybody else should be excited for this, is the Whitney Biennial. It's opening on March 20th and goes on until the fall. This event does not happen every year. It happens every other year. The Whitney Biennial is a juried exhibit, meaning it's highly selective to be in this exhibit. And it's contemporary art, meaning it's art of our times. Modern art is the period of 
early 1900s to maybe the 70s, but contemporary art is our time. Some even consider the Whitney Biennial as the trendsetter for art, so we have an expectation of art to come. So why is this exciting? Why should we be excited about this? If you think about art from other periods, the art is a reflection of that time. When Picasso painted La Guernica, it was to address an issue that was happening during his time. But what about our time? We enjoy all this historical art, but what about art from our time? What about the reflection of what's happening today? They say that art helps us process the world around us. So I think while it's important to look at art from other periods, we should also pay attention to the present. And that's why I am very excited to go to the Whitney Biennial and see the world in the lens of artists that are alive, that are living, and they're living in our lifetime. I know contemporary art isn't everybody's cup of tea. I often hear, oh, I don't understand it, I don't get it. That's why there are artist statements alongside art pieces, and it's always worth reading them. I know sometimes visiting a museum is like reading a book while standing up and it's tiring but you don't have to see the entire museum you can see portions of it you can take a break and have coffee and then come back the Whitney Museum is in the meatpacking district in lower Manhattan you can get there by taking the ACE and L subway lines while you're there you can visit the High Line Little Island and Chelsea Market St. Patrick's Day is a huge holiday that's celebrated all across the United States, and every city has their unique way of celebrating. Chicago dyes their river green, and many, many cities have their own parade. And as it happens, New York has the largest. New York's St. Patrick's Day Parade is on March 16th at 11 a.m. The parade has around 150,000 participants, from bands to bagpipes and dancers. It's estimated that 2 million people are going to watch this parade. The St. Patrick's Day Parade will start in Midtown Manhattan. The parade will be along 5th Avenue. It will start at 44th Street, marches north past St. Patrick's Cathedral, and will end at 79th Street. A prime spot to watch is at St. Patrick's Cathedral because the parade participants are known to perform their best here, but it does get busy. Up north is going to be a little less crowded, and if you view the parade from this side, you get Central Park as a backdrop. And if you watch the tail end of the parade, you're already near Central Park and a few museums that you can enjoy afterwards. Depending on where you want to watch the parade, here are the trains nearby. As I mentioned earlier, March is a transitional month. We're going from winter to spring. And every start of spring, Macy's has a flower show. This is notable because the Macy's flagship store has about two and a half million square feet. It takes up an entire Manhattan block. That's huge. Having said this, Macy's will be decked out inside out. The outside will be covered in flowers, the window displays will have flowers, and the inside side will have flowers. It's really a colorful way to greet spring, especially after all this gray that we've experienced over the winter. As of filming this, there's no official date that has been announced when the flower show will start, but historically, it's always been the first Sunday after the first day of spring. So this year, our estimate is gonna be from March 24th all the way through the first week of April. The Macy's flagship store is in Midtown Manhattan. Nearby is Koreatown and the Empire State Building. You can get there with these trains. If you're a runner and you're in tune with the running calendar, you would know that most of marathons are in the fall. That's because people are training all throughout the summer and they have their race in the fall. Along the way, there are shorter races like 5Ks, 10Ks, and half marathons. People training for the marathon in the fall often use these as training races. And there's also people that just love short races. In March, there's the New York Half Marathon, which is 
is happening on March 17th. Just like the full marathon, the half marathon is fun to watch, it's fun to attend and cheer on the runners. The half marathon starts at Prospect Park, then heads towards the Manhattan Bridge to cross into Manhattan, skirts along the East River, goes through Midtown, ending in Central Park. If you're like me, you're probably itching to be outdoors in nice sunny weather after being cooped up all winter. But that doesn't mean there's nothing to do indoors while you're in New York while it's still cold. People often think that New York is cramped, there's no space, and they are correct. But that doesn't mean you can't do things like archery and bowling and indoor skydiving. Those are examples of things to do indoors in New York while it's not quite warm just yet. For indoor archery, there's Gotham Archery both in Chinatown, Lower Manhattan, and in Guanus Borum Hill area in Brooklyn. For bowling, I suggest Bolero at Chelsea Piers in Midtown Manhattan. As for indoor skydiving, there's iFly in Long Island City, Queens. And these are your trains. Believe it or not, outdoor ice skating is still a thing in March. The Wolman Ice Rink in Central Park is open until March 15. So you still have time to go ice skating. If you didn't go ice skating during December, during the height of the holiday season, if you didn't go ice skating in January or February, now's your last chance to go outdoor ice skating in Central Park. What I like about the Central Park rink is the quality of the ice. It's much nicer than, say, Rockefeller Center or Bryant Park. A lot less tourists, a lot more locals. And if you have your own skates, it's only $15 and you're not limited to a time. Once you're in, you can skate for as long as you want, unlike the other places where you only have an hour to skate. And of course, you have Central Park as your backdrop. It's beautiful, it's picturesque, and it's a great way to spend an afternoon. The Woman Rink is at the south end of Central Park. Not too far away is Central Park Zoo, which I talked about in last month's video. And here are your nearest trains. Last month in February, I talked about how it's NBA season and it's a good time to watch a basketball game. A lot of you reached out telling me how I have failed to mention it's NHL season as well. I am well aware that it is hockey season and I was saving it for this month's thing to do. Hockey season is in the air and if you've never been to a hockey game, it's a lot of fun. I recommend going at least once. Hockey in New York is just as fun as any other sport. There's history, entertainment, random things, and of course the sport itself. Even if you don't know much about hockey or you don't follow it, like I said, watching a sports event, a live sports event, is all about atmosphere and energy and it's a lot of fun. NHL in New York is at Madison Square Garden in Midtown Manhattan. You can get there with these trains. And those are some recommendations for things to do in March. If you have other things that you'd like to add and share with the community, comment down below. Or if there's something that you want to suggest for April's video. I would like to take this time to thank my Patreon members and YouTube members. Some of you have been around for well over a year. Some have been around for two years. And I really appreciate you being here, being supportive of this channel. If you're not a member and you're curious, members have access to an active Discord community and recently we just started this pets channel and people are sharing photos of their pets. And I also post mini vlogs every single week where I share things that I don't generally broadcast to the general public. I talk about YouTubing, I talk about things that I do in New York or things that happen in my business and things that I experience as a creator. These are some of the perks of being a Patreon or a YouTube member. So if you're interested, check out patreon.com slash urban caffeine or the join button of this channel. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and until the next one, happy New Yorking.